Hey guys, Ranger here, and welcome back to another episode, reaction and, and review, and this is to the 18th episode of MLP, which is, She Talks to Angel. I'm wondering if this is an episode where it ta it brings about the concept of uh, Fluttershy understanding Angel, or if somehow... Something happens where suddenly Angel is able to talk through Fluttershy. I don't know. <laughs> I've, ever since I saw like that this episode was out, the latter has always been what I've thought. I don't know. Let's dive in. Start video 3, 2, 1, click. Mm -hmm. That's a while. Mm -hmm. oh. Antoine believes what he eats is his business. Do other predators feel that way too? Would any prey like to respond? <laughs> I like the wolf. You know, does it bother you when Antoine tries to eat you? Just because you're on opposite ends of the food chain doesn't mean you can't work. Huh? It doesn't mean you can't. <clears throat> it doesn't mean you can't work together. <laughs> What the wolf? I'm sorry, but the more you distract everyone, the longer this will take. <laughs> I am listening to you, but if you really want to be heard, you should join our predator prey support group. Then you could talk to everyone here. You could teach all these hungry predators the delights of a carrot-based cuisine. Sorry, everyone. I think somebody just wants a little attention. Somebody. Now, since we all need to get along, what if all predators promise to only eat vegetables while staying at the sanctuary? Mm. Oh, Sandra, you can do it. Okay. <gasps> Angel, Sandra, wait! <laughs> Oh boy. It might look like chaos, but Fluttershy makes it work, even with Angel running around. Ooh, perhaps I can help those two get along before something here can go terribly wrong. Okay! Already, I, I really already. I think this is a very cute episode with Fluttershy, and yeah, it's highlighting how much of a jerk that Angel can be sometimes, which is interesting. Let's begin. Zakora found this little guy and brought him to my office, but I thought he might do better at the sanctuary. Salamander? Fire breathing! Bringing him here seemed the right thing to do. I've never seen geckos breathe smoke, though. Have you? Oh, Ooh, I certainly haven't. I thought we could take a look at his diet. Plus, it's about time for me to give all the animals here a checkup. That's a wonderful idea. Cute little thing. If we really want to know what's going on, we need to make sure the problem isn't your food. I wouldn't worry too much. It's probably just something he's been eating. Oh, oh. um, is there anything else we can do for you? <laughs> ah, seeing what you two do, the real question is, can I help you? You mean me and Angel? Mm hmm. Oh, he's fine. We're fine. I, I just don't always have time to indulge him. But we're best friends. Even the best of Waters. friends need help from time to time. Come visit me in my hut. Should you change your mind? She'll change her mind. Okay, thanks. But Angel and I are great. Oh, good, Miss Fluttershy. 
Is this the list of what you do every day? <laughs> How do you find time for anything else? Between here and teaching at the school? I'm not sure I do. You're gonna love it here, little gecko. What is it? Not fluffy enough? Hungry. Oh, sorry. We need to see if your food is causing your issue. Huh? Hmm. Not now, Angel. They're snake treats made to look like chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> They're vegan. Pinkie Pie made a whole jar of them. Vegan. <laughs> all yours if you promise. No more trying to eat Muriel the baby elephant. Ah. Uh -uh. You just <gasps> turned a snake vegan. No, okay. Angel. I have too much to do. Wing hands again. <laughs> oh, careful girl. That neck is still pretty sore. Don't forget to shift your weight, Scout. What does she want? Her neck is feeling better, but a massage every day for the next week wouldn't hurt. I'll add it to my list. <laughs> Fluttershy, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This place would be a zoo without you. <laughs> Angel. Angel! Listen to you for once. Just what exactly is that supposed to mean? He's getting a little stressed. Come back! Well, whatever it is, you're the only one he can tell about it. Little fella just wants you all to himself. Unfortunately, that's not an option. Oh, he's not causing any real trouble. Yes, I'll he is. That, possibly. For that, I'll just stop talking. <laughs> I'll take care of it. I hope this is important, Angel. I barely need a dent in my to-do list for today. Concentrated carrot extract? That's for reviving energy sapped herbivores. Are you feeling run down? You just like the taste? Oh, Angel, that extract is in short supply. What's gotten into you? Every day this week you've been causing trouble when I have work to do. Of course I know you can't talk to any pony else, but that's not my fault. I have responsibilities. You're right. We can't go on like this. I guess we do need to see Zakora for help. Oh boy. No need to sit and silently stew. Tell each other what's bothering you. He's so impatient, even when he knows I have work to do. Well, that's not true. We talk all the time. Of course talking to the sanctuary counts. That's where I am when I don't have a class to teach. <laughs> what do you mean that's the problem? You feel like I'm the only pony you can talk to and all I do is ignore you. Well, I feel like you don't care about my responsibilities. <laughs> um, as you can see, we're kind of at an impasse. <laughs> ah, such luck you're coming here indeed. Behold the antidote you need. Is this what you meant by help us? When uh -huh. trouble brews between you two, turning sister against brother, true understanding is what's due. Each must come oh to know the other. There's no time to waste. Go directly home. But you both must taste when you're finally alone. Okay. Iron Bonbon. Not yet, Angel. Sakura told us to take it together when we got home. Oh, I suppose we could dust off the old picnic blanket. It'll be just like old times. We'll drink the potion and settle in for a nice tea party. I can barely remember the last time we did that. I've been so busy at the sanctuary. Though... I really need to keep an eye on Zakora's gecko, and I haven't finished any of today's chores. 
If I don't, the animals won't get the care they need. Oh, maybe we should just save the potion until after... Angel! Sakura said to go home first! I know she said we have to take it together, so I guess I have to now. I wonder what it's gonna do... I switched you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, hold up. Am I a pony? Why am I a pony? <laughs> I thought it was gonna switch them. Oh my gosh. Question. Did we switch bodies? Seriously? I'm a pony? La 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 la. Talking is so cool. Do you think this is what Sakura meant to happen? How are you gonna do your chores? Really? That's what you're worried about? <laughs> well, maybe I don't want to switch back. I've only been able to talk to you since we met. And now, I can talk to any pony I want. I'm already loving this. Roses are red, violets are blue. You sell flowers, and so do you. Rubber baby buggy bumpers, rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> toy bow, toy bow, toy bow. Yeah! This was just a let loose episode. <laughs> I am so too listening. Wasn't I'm so it? Bossy because. Are there carrots around here? Okay, I'm beginning to think Angel suffered from you think Sakura gave us ADD. The wrong potion, so you're gonna go to her hut in the forest and get something to switch us back. All by yourself? You really don't know what it's like being a bunny. Good luck with that. I'm gonna go find those carrots. I need to finish your chores? <laughs> I don't work for you, and caring about other animals is a you thing. <gasps> the scare? You can still do that? <laughs> oh, scare making me do your bidding against my will. Alright, I'll go do your lane chores while you go see Zagora. <laughs> I love this episode! This is so interesting with Fluttershy. This is awesome. Anybody know where that useless list of Fluttershy's chores is? Hey, Fluttershy! I was starting to wonder if you'd make it back. Fluttershy! Oh, yeah, uh, that's me. Definitely Fluttershy, uh, 100%. Okay. See how shy I am. I talk to animals, I want to marry Discord. Your list is open. What? Chores that I will absolutely not rush through because I definitely do not have better things to do. Well, I got well, that. I want. I want to marry Discord. Part. Uh, I hope the gym tart stall is. Yeah, this is a again. fun episode. I could use a snack. You nearly bought every tart they had last time, Spike. I can't imagine they wouldn't show up when there's a great customer like you. Oh, hi, Angel. What's going on? Problem. Do you know what he's trying to say? Nope. Sorry, Angel. You should probably find Fluttershy. If I see her, I'll let her know you're looking for her. Oh, boy. And we're gonna keep at it until you start to develop a taste for it. There's not got all check Muriel's trunk. <laughs> eh, seems fine to me. As long as we don't need those keys. Anyway, Ouch. let's see. Massage Clementine's neck. <laughs> Out to switch legs? Uh, probably best not to wake him. Did the thing with the thing, yada yada yada, animals, animals, animals. All that's left is monitors of Cora's gecko until bedtime. <laughs> Alright, dude. How about we do bedtime now? <laughs> yeah, Edie makes me tired too. Which reminds me, there's some carrot extract with my name on it. 
Okay, let's get you fed and off to Dreamland. What do you eat anyway? What do you say, Snake? Can you find something else to eat if I borrow those cookies from my friend here? Uh oh. Huh? Sure, that's normal. There you go. Problem solved. I don't see what's so hard about this job. Fluttershy is such a wife. Oh boy. Angel, what have you done? Today, my fuzzy friend, did things work out for you in the end? I'm sorry, dear bunny, that things seem so grave, but I don't understand when you sign and wave. A single link to all the world, only one in all the land. Okay. How special she must be to you, the one who understands. Perhaps if you explained what you wanted to some pony who understood, if you truly felt heard and valued, all would return to good. How about you just... And if you were to both apologize, having learned this little lesson, I imagine that might bring an end to the friendship therapy session. Or you could just write it down. Uh, Fluttershy? Do you mind helping me look for Muriel, the baby elephant? Oh, she's having dinner with Antoine. <laughs> Antoine the python? He was on the list. Remember, Antoine wants to have Muriel over for dinner. Not over for dinner. He wants to have her for dinner. Wait, what? <laughs> now you realize what you've done. Uh oh. Bad snake! Open your mouth this instant, mister! Lick <laughs> around. <laughs> Freezing fire now! Oh crap! What is going on? You did all the chores on your list, huh? Didn't you? Well, technically I did them, kind of. But more technically, it's not my list. You wrote it! Did I, though? What's gotten into you? You do not want to know. <coughs> huh? Angel? What's wrong with her? Him? What happened? He's exhausted. Fluttershy, I need a jar of concentrated carrot extract. Stat! <gasps> it's locked in the supply room. Where are your keys? Yeah. Any ideas how to get the keys out of the elephant that's inside the snake? <laughs> okay, point taken. And I totally deserve it. I did not provide you with the care that Fluttershy went. But now you know what it's like not to get the level of attention to which you become accustomed. The point is... Fluttershy is trapped in my bunny body. If we don't help her, maybe none of us will get her attention. I get that you don't want to help me, but don't you want to help her? <laughs> Here goes nothing. <laughs> It worked! <gasps> now we just need to get those keys out of there. It works. <laughs> nice one, Snake. I guess Fluttershy was right. Predators and prey can work together. <laughs> This place is so much work. Oh, 
I know. I have no clue how you do it all, but we are so grateful. I can't believe she does this every day. I just wish I could tell her myself. What? <laughs> You're awake! It was so hard getting to Zakora's hut and impossible getting back. You can't believe I survived like this? Well, I can't believe you work here every day. These animals are crazy. No wonder you don't have time for me. My life is hard? No, your life is hard. You never appreciated me? No, I never appreciated you. <laughs> You're sorry? I'm sorry too. Come here, you little bunny who's a pony who's a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they switched back. I was waiting for her to like dunk the whole I'm carrot back. extract right I'm there. A pony again. That's angel. cute. I promise to That's the first time I can say Angel has been cute. What do you mean maybe I won't have to? You want to do what? And that's when I realized Fluttershy doesn't have to be the only one I talk to. I can come here and talk to all of you. And now that I know how much work goes into this place, I suppose I could kind of, sort of, help out every now and then. Hmm. <laughs> I still love oh, that wolf. Angel, that is so sweet. But now that I know what you go through every day, I understand why your time with me is so important. I promise to always make time for you. Turns out your friend here doesn't have a problem at all. He isn't a gecko, he's a fire lizard. Ah. I forgot that before they get their flame, it's hard to tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to discover where the source of it lies. Or the fire that he breathes would be quite the surprise. Speaking of surprises, can you please never do that again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This episode, yeah, this is one of my favorite episodes of this season. Totally. Hardcore. Hoofs down, this is one of my favorite episodes of this season. Right here, this is one of my favorite episodes of this season. And so help me, I can only imagine, you know, I'm curious. I can only imagine how much fun Andrea had in the studio doing this episode. I'm wondering, like, how she reacted whenever she read the script and saw the dialogue and saw the scenes that she was going to be doing. Whenever Jason directed how Fluttershy was going to be. Ah, this was just pretty much like a let loose episode for her, wasn't it? This was such a fun episode. And I think what makes this episode even more fun for me is, is just the thought of Andrea, how much fun she had in the studio doing 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 the voice recording for Fluttershy or for, for Angel in this episode. I can only imagine that. And honestly, uh, I really want to <laughs> really <clears throat> I'm looking forward now to seeing uh, to <laughs> seeing narrator 007's reaction to this episode and hearing his thoughts on it. I'm really curious to see that as well. This was such a fun episode. Such a fun episode. And definitely one of my favorite episodes of this season. Hose down. So the basic concept with this episode is the is the walk a mile in someone else's shoes, or in this case, walk a mile in someone else's horseshoes. And this is I have seen similar setups with storytelling before um, in other shows where two people had seeming had basically two different lives or seemingly different lives, 
and neither really understood or appreciated the things that they kind of went through. Actually, I just realized, this is pretty much like an MLP version of Freaky Friday. <laughs> this is like an MLP version of Freaky Friday. Um, I'm not talking about the new Freaky Friday. I'm actually talking about, about the original Freaky Friday, I believe it was, in the 1960s. And then I'm also talking about Disney's Freaky Friday from 1976. Uh, which is a fond movie for me, particularly because of the 73 Dodge Polara in that. The car that I have sitting right here, the police car that I built. And so this makes me think of that. <clears throat> in that particular movie, you had the daughter, you had the mother, who didn't understand each other's lives. And they ended up both switching lives and had to experience, they ended up both switching lives and experienced each other's lives from each other's perspectives and came to understand how difficult each other's lives were. They had a better understanding and, and appreciation for, for the work and tasks that each other did. And they understood better, they, un, un, they understood better what each had to go through, how each other's li li lives, lives were. And so basically this is an MLP version of Freaky Friday with uh, Fluttershy and Angel Bunny switching lives, completely switching roles, and beginning to experience each other's lives. And this is a very interesting episode. And like, so this isn't the first time that this kind of story has happened. I have seen this setup before, where two characters would swap, um, not just <clears throat> or not swap lives, but swatch, but swatch, uh, but switch roles. We got that in another episode of MLP, actually, with Luna and 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 Celestia, where. Uh, Starlight ended up causing Luna and Celestia to switch cutie marks and thus switch roles. And so Luna had to experience Celestia's life for a day. Uh, Celestia had to experience Luna's life for a day. And they come to have a greater understanding and appreciation for the difficulties of each other's jobs and tasks and lives, uh, actually, and realized that they weren't really tuned, that they weren't really mentally and emotionally prepared to handle each other's lives. And so, this isn't the first time in MLP that we've got a, got a setup like that, but it's an interesting scenario to hear to see it play out with Angel and Fluttershy. This is a very interesting episode because, now Angel is an interesting character. She, I mean, Angel is an interesting character because sometimes, mo most of the time, Angel can seem Angel is not whatsoever his name. He's more devil. Uh, and so a lot of people have, like, I remember seeing people make mentions about them hating Angel. And Angel's cute, he's a bunny, but I won't deny, he has acted immature, he's acted very, very jerkish. He has, in fact, done that. I'm not going to deny that he has, in fact, done that. And so, but, you know... Here, I can more understand him feeling left out, him feeling, you know, kind of tossed to the side. I can more understand him acting out and acting more aggressive in this as opposed to before. He was just kind of being a jerk. So I guess in a way, maybe you could say that this episode is in a sense sort of karma coming back on him for all of the stuff that he done before. At least that's just a theory. But this episode, like I said, Angel is an interesting character because here, I would have to say that Angel definitely has more of a reason to be, to complain about Fluttershy not giving him any attention whatsoever, like neglecting him. I can't completely understand Angel's perspective here, but I can also kind of understand Fluttershy's perspective. It's one of those scenarios where you can clearly, you can understand both characters' perspectives and you can see that there's not that it's a it's a complicated issue pretty much um, now Fluttershy took on this responsibility uh, she she was given the task of teaching at the school but she took willingly took on the responsibility of this animal sanctuary but realistically this is pretty much just like anything in real life <clears throat> whenever you take on uh, a hobby or a passion that you enjoy, there is going to be some sacrifice that you're going to have to make. You're going to have to try to incorporate that and try to work that into your life. 
Um, I I relate to that in terms of YouTube because I have sacrificed sleep before to try to get videos rendered, to get videos edited, to get videos uploaded. I have done that, and so I know the concept of that. But this episode is interesting in that you have two different characters, uh, Fluttershy. Uh, I have to make the remark about uh, Zakor calling Fluttershy an angel brother and sister. Uh, that's a very interesting thing. But basically, Fluttershy was busying herself with a lot of the responsibilities that she had. She had teaching at the school, but she also had this an animal sanctuary to have to tend to. And she had, she was kind of, in a way, kind of accustomed to the different things that she was doing around Animal Sanctuary, but at the same time it was also still busy for her and it was definitely kind of taking its toll on her to a degree. She was tired and uh, she was just feeling a little drained, but she was still trying to focus and I really have to admire her, her dedication for that. I really have to admire that, but Fluttershy was definitely busying herself with everything at the sanctuary, as well as the school. And she did make the remark to Dr. Fauna that she had been busy with all of that, and she wasn't really sure that she was actually getting everything done. And so Fluttershy has a responsibility. She has to teach at the school, and she also has to deal with the animal sanctuary. Now, one could easily say that, well, the an animal sanctuary was something that Fluttershy took on herself. And yes, it was, but that was something that she always wanted to do, and so I'm honestly not going to fault Fluttershy whatsoever for pursuing something that she wanted to do. I mean, it's just a natural thing. Anything that you really want to pursue, anything you want to do, it's going to come with major responsibilities, and it's going to, it can burn you out uh, if you allow it to do so. You know, you're going to, even with things you enjoy doing, you're going to have to take a step back at some point, take a breather, uh, collect yourself, and get back in there. You know, you can't just keep going at it all the time. And Fluttershy was busy, was really, was really busy herself with everything here going on. I mean, she had a lot of stuff on her plate. Thus, because of her being so busy, Angel was feeling left out. Angel was feeling neglected, and he wasn't getting any attention whatsoever. Now, one could kind of say that Angel was a bit of an attention whore, and he wanted all the attention for himself. Although, to be completely honest, I'm not also really going to fault Angel for that, because, you know, he was used to getting all the attention from Fluttershy. Like before the Animal Sanctuary, before um, the school, before Discord, uh, Angel, Fluttershy kind of gave Angel the majority of the attention. And so he was kind of used to that. And so it's it, it's very typical, you know, it's it, it's natural. Whenever you get accustomed to something, whenever you get, you get used to something, and then there's suddenly a break in it, you find yourself in a situation where you begin to suffer some sort, uh, to a degree, of, of withdrawal from it. Uh, basically, you get into a rhythm, into a system, and whenever there's a break in that chain, it feels completely unorthodox to you. And so here, it's kind of like the situation where a child uh, you know, enjoys the attention from their parents, but then whenever they suddenly have a brother or a sister come into the picture, th you know, that attention is kind of split, and so they're not exactly getting all, all the attention. But it's also a similarity, and this one I unfortunately can relate to. Um, it's kind of like having a friend or someone you know who hangs out with you, but then the moment that they start dating, you know, suddenly you become second rate and tossed aside. And I've had that experience. I've been the victim of that. I've been the one tossed aside a few times in my life. And it's went like, there's no good resolve. There's no good, no good resolution. Or sorry, there's no good resolution for that. I can't say that there's been a good resolution for that. Um, but here, Angel was disinterrupted, kind of... Mm, I wouldn't. I won't exactly say the center of of attention, but like he was getting the attention from Fluttershy, 
and Fluttershy, I think, was definitely more of a caretaker, but I think it could be safe to say that they might have kind of developed um, maybe a little bit of a big sister, little brother kind of kind of relationship to, to, to a degree, possibly, but Angel was used to that, and so suddenly here, Fluttershy was busying herself with other things, and she didn't have as much time to spend with him. Now, realistically, this also is something to, I mean, this is something that does happen. Um, it happens with friends, it happens in relationships, it happens e e even with your parents. You know, uh, like a situation where, you're, where a friend, or perhaps you, or maybe someone else in, in uh, like boyfriend, girlfriend, and a relationship, or you, or your parents, or you are, you know, busying, uh, are or is busying yourself with something, uh, with other tasks in your life, and so you're, and so if it's like the other part, then they're busying themselves, and they don't, they don't really have time for you as much. And if it's you, you're busying yourself, and you don't really have time for them. And so, yeah, it begins to put a strain on that connection between you, between them, and it begins to affect that. It begins to it begins to strain it. And so there's a there's a moment where you have to you have to learn uh, basically you know give and take. Uh, you have to learn to make time for for one another to keep those bonds strong. And here, Fluttershy was busying herself with all these different tasks in her life, the school, the 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 animals, and she hadn't really had as much time for Angel, and so Angel was feeling left out. He was feeling, he was feeling neglected, and so he was kind of acting out in a way, uh, and so there's an interesting thing here. Realistically, I could look at it and say that Angel wasn't exactly handling it, definitely not in the most mature fashion. The mature fashion would have been for him to have just told her simply that she wasn't really having, she wasn't making enough time, that she was uh, doing so many other things in her life, she didn't really have time for anything else, and <clears throat> that they hadn't really had a chance to do anything, and that they needed to make time to be able to hang out, talk, have a picnic, tea party, do the things that they used to do. They need to try to make time for that. That would have been the mature thing to do, but instead Angel kind of jeopardized everything. He put the animals in danger, he put animals, or Fluttershy's animals sanctuary in danger. He acted out um, and retort and both uh, in both retort and just himself um, against Fluttershy because he was kind of trying to jeopardize that and he acted out uh, in in response to to that neglect. And that's not definitely not the best way to handle the situation. And so on that part, Angel was the villain here because of what he did. But he did learn his lesson later on. Uh, he didn't in fact learn his lesson. And so yeah, two different characters. Fluttershy busying herself with her with school, I mean with teaching at the school and then Animal Sanctuary, she has that responsibility. Angel was used to having the atten all the attention and then uh, Discord came along, the school came along and Animal Sanctuary came along and so you know, he had, you know, Fluttershy wasn't able to have as much time, and so he was feeling neglected. And honestly, I can sort of relate to both characters to a degree. I can, I can understand both characters' perspectives, and it really, like, honestly, I kind of feel bad for Angel. I do for feeling that way, you know, because there's someone that he really cares about who doesn't really seem to be making as much time for him. I can honestly say that I feel bad for Angel here, but also feel bad for Fluttershy because, like, she's busying herself with all of this and she doesn't really seem to see uh, the strain with Angel. And so it took her being put into his little bunny feet. Uh, to see to see that but there was also another thing going on in that angel is the only is that Fluttershy is the only one that can understand angel and no one else understands angel but Fluttershy does because she can talk to and because she can talk to animals she can understand him and so here it's basically like Fluttershy is in a sense angels only connection with the world Fluttershy is the only one who understands him and can relay 
what he says to others if it's important. She can understand him whenever no one else can. And so, yeah, I mean, kind of imagine that. Put yourself in that situation where imagine only one person in your life can understand you, but they're not around. You feel isolated. You feel completely alienated and like no one understands you whatsoever except for that one person. It kind of makes you feel alone. I mean, it makes you paranoid. It would kind of drive it would kind of drive you insane. So, Fluttershy is really Angel's only connection with the world, and Fluttershy didn't really understand uh, the dangers of being a bunny as well that he had to go through, and pretty much where he lives with Angel, he doesn't have to worry about that, uh, he doesn't have to worry about that fear, but she kind of experienced what a regular wild bunny experiences, uh, trying to avoid being captured, trying to avoid being eaten, trying to avoid being killed. But there was definitely a strain here, which came to a head uh, with the uh, carrot, with the carrot, with the carrot extract, where Angel and Fluttershy, they their conflict between them escalated to the boiling point. And at first, Angel, and honestly, from a from a psychological perspective, this was kind of difficult overall to see. This particular scene where Fluttershy tried to tell Zakora that there was nothing wrong between them, between her and Angel, this was kind of a little difficult for me to see because on a psychological standpoint, I'm not really certain. There's two ways that you can analyze this particular situation. And from a from my t personal perspective, I'm not certain if here, if Fluttershy had a suspicion that there was a bit of tension between her and Angel but she just thought that it could resolve itself or you know just that it would just go it would just go away and so they were fine or if Fluttershy was actually living in denial here and judging by how she acted she acted a little a, bit, a little stressed and she tried to tell uh, tr she tried to tell Zakora that things between her and Angel were totally fine. So it makes me think that maybe there's a possibility here that ain't that Fluttershy, she was aware of everything that was going on between uh, Angel earlier that day, how he'd been acting out, and so she just kind of thought that everything was fine still. She was kind of living in denial. And what made me even more feel that way, not just her, how she talked, how she relayed that to Zakora, but also in her body language, which also more solidified what I said. Because the, after she finishes telling Zakora this, there's a split second where she looks down at Angel and as if like she has, and acts, then she has to hug him and act like everything is fine. And then she has to smile, like give a confirmative smile, as if saying, see, we're totally fine. And so this particular segment was a little uncomfortable for me. And not in a, like a, and totally not in a bad way, I wish they hadn't done that way. No, it was, it was un uncomfortable because realistically, this, from a, again, from a psychological standpoint, it seems more, like I said, it could just be that Fluttershy didn't think that there was anything wrong. She thought everything was fine and she was kind of just trying to put aside all of the acting out that Angel had, had, had been doing. Or she actually thought that there might be something wrong, but she was hoping that it would resolve itself. But I'm definitely more leaning towards the latter, which the more the, the, towards the third option that she thought there was something kind of wrong but she just kind of wanted to pretend that it wasn't there that everything was going to be uh, fine or that there wasn't anything wrong whatsoever and she wanted to possibly pass on the the idea that everything was fine between her and Angel to Zakora. she didn't want Zakora to think there wasn't anything wrong at all but yeah, this particular scene with Fluttershy, her dialogue, the way she spoke, and her body language, 
seemed a, it didn't seem as it didn't seem as reassuring to her like she was almost betraying herself in how that she was conversing with um, and how she was telling Zakor that er, that er, everything was fine she didn't act fully calm about it it was seen more like she was putting on an act rather than she might have had a little bit of confidence in that but it seemed more like she was feeling a little concerned and un unsure herself and like she was lying to herself and that's what I honestly got whenever I look at this at her at her body language with this scene and so yeah it's kind of uncomfortable because realistically there are situations like this in real life uh, you know that with people that can act like everything's fine but in actuality it isn't now whenever Angel and Fluttershy are in Zakora's hut and they actually have a moment of con a conversation between them that's a good thing like conversing I feel like I'm a therapist here but um, conversing is a good thing both friendship relationship whatever um, having a good solid conversation it, it, it is a good thing and it can help basically Fluttershy and Angel were able to converse with themselves and understand more about each other here to a degree but uh, basically Zikora knew that they needed to walk a mile in, in each other's shoes to be able to fully more comprehend it now there, uh, there was a moment of basically of kind of, of give and take here where uh, Angel wanted to have a, a, a picnic just me, just like they used to and originally Fluttershy was for it she was originally for it and thought it would be a good idea but then she started stressing out over the her chores and the stuff that she had to do and so Angel realized that you know that they wouldn't really have a chance again she was kind of putting him on the back burner and so Angel decided to be take Angel decided to take the NE initiative and just go ahead and take the potion. So that prompted Fluttershy to have to do it. And of course, whenever that happened, they switched roles and suddenly they were completely in, in each other's bodies. And honestly, this was hilarious because I, I, I was honestly glad that uh, Fluttershy still had her natural speaking voice whenever Angel was talking through her and that the voice hadn't changed because it just made it so much better to hear Fluttershy saying all these things. Uh, it was just so much better. But essentially, um, there was a moment, of course, where now this is goes to the moment where they begin to understand the difficulty of each other's lives. Uh, Fluttershy quickly understood the concept of feeling like no one else understood Angel or un, uh, uh, understood her because she realized that uh, Twilight and Spike could not understand her whatsoever, and she realized how dangerous it was to try to traverse the ever free, uh, the ever free forest as a little bitty bunny, and she also experienced the concept of death of having to try to avoid a giant. Uh, a giant eagle which was ready to have Angel for lunch and as being a pony you know larger they're able to to travel long, travel much longer distances but with Angel with little bunny feet um, and paws like it was much more difficult for uh, for Fluttershy and Angel's body to go any, to go anywhere and so it tire, tired her out a lot sooner. And of course, even whenever she got there, suddenly Zakora couldn't understand her. And uh, she, by this point, she's more understood the concept of how difficult it is kind of for Angel, you know, being a regular wild bunny. And of course, Zakora helps Fluttershy to kind of see, to kind of, uh, 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 um, to understand this. Now, one thing that I noticed with this was there was there wasn't as much of a lesson for Fluttershy as there was for Angel, um, and I think that realistically, uh, the, the lesson for Fluttershy uh, is that I mean Fluttershy's lesson was learned pretty. She learned her lesson pretty fast in this. Uh, Angel's lesson, however, took more time for him to have to do, and he had to go through a more emotional thing. Um, I think 
I guess in a way that was pretty deserving of his character. But of course, the moment that Fluttershy shows back up in an 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 Angel's body, uh, Angel in Fluttershy's body, this is getting complicated. <laughs> My head is going to explode here soon. Um, is like really emotional over it. And of course, Angel is ready to do whatever to help Fluttershy out. And so there's that moment of conversation that transpires where Fluttershy and Angel begin to begin to reconcile between them. Uh, Angel has a much much more understanding, uh, has a better understanding of the difficulties of what it takes to take care of the animals at the at the sanctuary. Angel didn't think that there was anything to it whatsoever. He didn't put any real effort whatsoever into the chores, into the tasks that Fluttershy nor normally did. As a result of that, the animals did not get the care that they deserved. And so later on, of course, naturally and understandably, uh, the animals completely ignored him whenever he asked them for help. And he then he was kind of able to relay to them, now you understand how it feels to feel left out, to feel neglected. And so he kind of was able to relay that to them, and so they kind of understood that. And so, in a way, he kind of got a bit of a, a bit of a taste of his own of his own medicine there. But still, he was willing to work with them and to do what he could to try to help Fluttershy out. Um, and so he had a greater understanding then of the difficulties that it took to take care of the of the of the animals. And that was just the sanctuary. That wasn't dealing with the students at at the school of of friendship, nor has uh, Angel had to deal with uh, trying to defeat a villain either. He hasn't had to worry about that, so he just dealt with a small part of Fluttershy's life. But um, Fluttershy, I think, also uh, realized, of course, the difficulty of having only one person understand you, and how difficult it was to be a bunny sometimes, and just you know walking around in a little bitty paws. But um, now, I I have to say here, um, Fluttershy and Angel did tell each other, you know, they're like, like, uh, like, we didn't appreciate each other, and so, you know, we learned to do that, of course, and appreciate how important that we are in, we are in each other's lives, yes, but, I won't deny, I feel that, personally, uh, like, Fluttershy, sorry, <sighs> Angel made the remark through Fluttershy, that he didn't understand how she worked there every day and that uh, her life was hard. I won't deny, I feel like, and he said that she, he understood now why that she didn't have as much time for him. And so I think that, yes, it is a good thing that Angel understands how important that what Fluttershy does is, but I won't deny that I think that Fluttershy also should have learned a lesson here that she should try to make time for Angel as well. Um, I know that teaching at the school it is important and you know the the animal sanctuary is is important as well, but Angel is still a constant in Fluttershy's life. He's been there since before all of that and he I'm sure is more important to her than the sanctuary and then this than the school. And so I really personally think that Fluttershy should have learned a lesson here about trying to balance her time and spending more time with those that she cares about that are important to her, in this case, Angel. So personally, I feel like the... Now, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I do, I do love this episode and I love the writing for it, but I won't deny that it kind of seems that the episode is kind of saying that it kind of gives you the impression that it's saying, and I'm not dissing whatsoever. I'm not dissing the writers or anything like that. Uh, I'm not dissing, I'm not dissing the episode, but it kind of gives the impression that it's saying that if someone is busy with stuff in their lives, you know, and they're kind of neglecting you that just, you know, understand that they're busy with it and just let it go. Um, and just under, you know, just appreciate them anyway. And I don't really agree with that personally. Um, I think that Fluttershy, there should have been a balance, more of a balance with this episode. And I think that 
it would have been great if Fluttershy had have learned that if she had realized that she was neglecting Angel, making him feel left out. And so she uh, she realizes that she hadn't been spending as much time with him. And so that's part of the reason why he was acting out. And that she realizes that she needs to spend more time with him and make time for those that she cares about. I mean, you know, the school is important. The sanctuary is important, yes. But she also needs to try to find a balance and try to make time for those that she cares about as well. Especially those... I mean, especially those that have been there, you know, for, you know, since, I mean, for a long time. Uh, the, all, all of her pony friends, Angel, uh, you know, Discord, you know, I'm sure that if Fluttershy had to give up her sanctuary for her friends, she would in a feather flap. And I think that there was a lack of Fluttershy learning. She learned how difficult it is to be a bunny, yes, but that seems a little ins insignificant. It seems because it's F Angel lives with Fluttershy, and so he doesn't have to experience the wild uh, like a regular bunny does. And so Fluttershy just experienced being a bunny from a wild bunny's perspective, not from Angel's perspective, where he gets to live under a roof and avoid the rain, the cold, the heat, and he kind of lives a lap of luxury to a degree. And so Fluttershy didn't really experience Angel's life. And so Angel did under Angel did under come to understand the importance of Fluttershy's role, of her of the things that she's taken on in her life, but Fluttershy seems to have not understood uh, the feeling of neglect, the feeling of being left out, the angel was suffering. And so I do feel that there was a lack of that in this episode, and that it would have been good if Fluttershy had have learned that she needs to make time for her friends. Because I feel like as it is, as it stands, it seems like basically if one person is, you know, if you have two friends. One is busy with other aspects in their life, and they're sort of neglecting the other, the other friend. Then the other friend is supposed to be okay with it and say, "Well, I understand. I respect you." I mean, yeah, that might be a good thing. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's not, but continuing down that road with staying busy with uh, uh, other things and not making time for one another to hang out, to talk, is not a good thing. It's not healthy for that friendship. It's not healthy for a for a relationship either. It's not healthy. Communication, being together is important. And I feel like, you know, that's the lesson that Fluttershy should have learned here. And that, you know, that would have been, I think that would have made this episode better had Fluttershy have learned that. And so while this is definitely one of my favorite episodes of this season, just because of the dialogue for Fluttershy and just the scenes with her, or with Angel in Fluttershy's body, um, take that as you will, uh, still, I do feel that the episode would have, been, would have hit a higher note had Fluttershy have learned that particular lesson. I'm not saying that Fluttershy is a bad guy here, you know, obviously, but still, I do think that... You know, I mean, there were signs, of course, that Fluttershy, you know, at one point she wanted to have a picnic with Angel, but then she kind of switched that, and she started worrying about the sanctuary and such, the, her chores. And so, yeah, again, she was kind of putting Angel on the back burner. This is not, that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing in, in a friendship, in a, in, in, in a, a, a relationship. Communication and being together is important. You know, having open communication and making time for one another is important, and I kind of feel that there was a lack of Fluttersh of expressing that and learned Fluttershy learning that in this particular episode, and it should have been, re you know, that should have been the lesson that Fluttershy learned, but it wasn't. So, yeah, that's the only nitpick that I have with this episode. Uh, overall, though, I really do, I mean, apart from that, I really enjoyed this episode, uh, but again, I do wish Fluttershy had have learned that particular lesson there. But... I really did enjoy this episode as well. Uh, there were other little things I did enjoy throughout this episode. Uh, first of all, the concept of Fluttershy with her little frazzled hair. She looks adorable like that. She really does. And of course, we got the wing hands brought back as well with Fluttershy using wing hands. That's interesting. It's very interesting. We've seen that, a few glimpses of that. It was also really cool to see it here. It was also really adorable to see Dr. Fauna come back as well. It was really cute to see her. And like I said, this little wolf. I love this little wolf! 
she's she's adorable. Like I love wolves. I do. I love wolves. And this wolf is adorable. I would love to have this wolf as a pet. Like I love my cat, yes. But a wolf this beautiful, like I love the like the color of this wolf. This wolf is absolutely beautiful. And yes, I uh, can't the review I can't do a review with this episode and not talk about the scene where Fluttershy makes where Angel makes her mention flute through Fluttershy. I want to marry Discord. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I freaking love this scene here. And honestly, I'm not really sure if that's just if that's just Angel joking or if there's more of a serious nature behind what he's saying. Um there's not really any complete... Okay, correction. If you go back to the scene where Flutter, where Discord did get hit, he took the blow for Fluttershy, and Fluttershy legit thought that, that Discord was, it was seriously injured. Yeah, she freaking bawled during that scene. But, like, this particular scene here, I'm not really certain if Fluttershy... I don't know if this is just Angel joking and saying, you know, she spends a lot of time with him, she wants to bang him, or if, the, you know, just joking, or if this is actually serious. Like, it kind of makes me wonder and wish and hope that there's like a little backstory off-screen scene where maybe like Angel has heard Fluttershy singing in the shower, maybe talking to herself about Discord, maybe daydreaming about him, or, you know, or something like that. Um, but through it's hilarious to hear it in Andrea's voice through you know as Fluttershy, her saying I want to marry Discord. I love this scene. I you can't I can't express how much I love this scene. And honestly, I know Disney fanatic has never done any reactions to the episode, at least none that I know of. But I would have loved to have seen her reaction during about with this scene here, <laughs> considering uh, considering she did the Bride of. of of Discord series and such, um, and daughter of Discord series, I would love to have seen her re and heard her reaction to this. But this one scene here, I bet she freaked out. But um, yeah, like I can just, I, I just, I, I would love to see like a complete, like, uh, I would love to see a complete episode dedicated to behind the scenes with this episode here. I just. And, and I know Miss Libman had to have had a blast doing this, but this scene, like I said, it makes me wonder: Is there actually something here? Uh, is Fluttershy legit? Is Angel being legit? Whenever he says through Fluttershy, she wants to marry Discord. Does she really want to marry Discord? I really want to believe that. And of course, I also can't do this episode. I can't do a review for this episode without talking about this particular scene. Whenever Fluttershy, through whenever Angel is Fluttershy, walks up to this fire-breathing lizard. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. First off, I want to say. Okay. First off, I have to interject. This fire-breathing lizard. It makes me think of the fire-breathing geckos from Fallout New Vegas. It makes sense now. It makes sense. It makes sense now. The Bellfire Bombs fell. This fire-breathing fire -breathing lizard ended up mutating and became the geckos that ended up inhabiting Las Pegasus 200 years later. It makes sense. It totally makes sense. This was not the fire-breathing geckos in New Vegas was before nuclear radiation. Okay, I understand now. Anyway, I love this scene. I do. I love this scene of Fluttershy walking up to this lizard and, and, and saying, All right, dude. Fluttershy saying, dude. Oh! Again, I love this scene. I can't express how much I love this particular scene. You, I just love this scene. I do. It's so cool. Like I said, during this scene, whenever Fluttershy and Angel switched back and Dr. Fauna saw that they had switched back, and she was like, What the F? What the freaking F. It would have been hilarious if there was an extra scene where she just suddenly turns back around, picks up the whole jug, or like the whole jar of that of that carrot carrot e carrot extract and just like chugs the whole thing. <laughs> but then I'm evil and twisted anyway. I think it's also cool at the end of it that, that Angel agrees 
to be open with the animals, communicate with them, and use Angel and use Fluttershy to help him to communicate with them. And I think that's really cool. I think that is on, uh, honestly really cool because Angel's learning. It's kind of like whenever, uh, you know, whenever Angel kind of has accepted to kind of adapt to that new aspect of not just Fluttershy's life, but now his as well. And he's kind of more open to that. Um, in a sense, it's kind of like how one, a bit of a comparison was how you could say that, uh, I guess some of us were in the Brony fandom. Um, you know, we weren't really, some of, some, some of us were more, were more reclusive, not really ready to socialize or, or anything. But once we were introduced to the show, suddenly here we were, we were ready to socialize with other Bronies and Pegasisters. And so, yeah, I can sort of see a, a bit of a correlation there. Like I said, I still wish that Fluttershy had have learned to, you know, make time for Angel as well. But I think that there is a bit of a thing where now Angel is going to be able to use Fluttershy to help communicate with the other animals. And so hopefully there is a bit of a give and take there that, you know, Angel is, you know, he's kind of more fitting into uh, one aspect of Fluttershy's life now. And so he's making a, making an actual active effort to be helpful, to be supportive, and to to actually, um, to actually uh, lend a paw in that. And so now I think he's more willing to help. And it, you, you, I, honestly, you could kind of say that there is a bit of a balance there. It's still not Fluttershy learning the lesson that I would have liked for her to have learned. But, like, if he helps out around the sanctuary and helps helps Angel or helps Fluttershy, then it might help her to be able to free up more time so they can spend time together. So that much might actually work out. But, like I said, here he's actually willing to uh, be helpful and communicate with the with the with the animals, and you know Fluttershy is able to speak for him, and so he she's able to translate that, and so now he's able to be open and kind of you know be a you know participate in that in that aspect of 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 her life, and so they will still be able to hang out through this as well. So I would have to say that this is a good conclusion. Yeah, I would have say I would say that it would be a better, even better conclusion. That, like I said, if Fletcher had have learned the lesson that I was referring to earlier, but it's still it's still a very fun, very good episode. I really enjoyed it. This was a very fun episode, and I loved it. It was great to hear Andrea. The things that she said as Fluttershy in this, I freaking loved it. And especially uh, after coming from BronyCon and watching, you know, after being at BronyCon and hearing the skit, the onstage skit um, with uh, with with Andrea, uh, Lauren, uh, Jason, and Jesse up on stage uh, in Hall B, seeing that, and then. Also, being part of the uh, uh, Jackbox, seeing the uh, Jackbox After Dark in Hall of Chaos, and now seeing this particular episode, I know Andrea had a blast. She had to have had a blast with this episode. This was just a fun, let loose episode with your character. This was fun, and I loved it. But uh, thanks again to everybody that made this episode. Thank you all so much. Thank you to the writers for like the dialogue and, and everything. Thank you, Miss Libman, for <laughs> getting such an amazing performance. Such a fun performance as Fluttershy. Thank you all so much for this episode as well. Thank you all so much. This was great. And um, thank you guys again. Hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know your thoughts as well in the comments. And uh, thanks again for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. Take care.